Hello everybody, welcome back to the uh, Reapers. I hope you're doing wonderfully well. Today, at the request of several valued viewers, we're going to be looking at control binds for the F4E module. A big shout out to Fly by Wire the German who helped me. We're going to cover the binds in uh, this particular order. To get to the special options menu, we'd click on the cog. Click on F4E. I've elected to keep the top three as is. The stick deflection uh, value is to help keep you from over -geeing the aircraft as well as the stick force blending. But the other aspect of this stick force blending is it allows you to make more precise inputs into the aircraft controls. The APHIS breakout zone is for when you have the APHIS engaged and it senses the stick deflection in roll and pitch at which the APHIS will stop trying to override your manual inputs. And I left those at the default values too. The next item is afterburner detent. This helps us to define the point at which your throttle input will ignite the afterburner. In other words, if it's set to 80%, the mill power range of the aircraft will be commanded between 0 and 80%, while the remaining 20% will control the afterburner range. The dead zone option is used to split the points in the range at which the afterburner will turn on and off. I've kept the value at the default value of 10%. If you do not want your human backseaters to have control inputs when they join you as a WISO, you would check this box. Jester will make landing callouts unless you uncheck this box. I do not feel that the inputs are intrusive and elect to keep them on. The HBUI is primarily related to those folks that will be using VR or multiple screens. I've left them at the default value. Leaving this box checks allows me to make inputs to Jester using the mouse controls. And at the same time, I've left this box checked, which allows me to use my head tracker, which I will demonstrate later. A couple of options available to you here is when you call up Jester, he'll either center between the HUD and the radar display, or uh, the second option is he'll pop up where you're looking. I've elected to keep him up for the HUD and the radar display. Ability to use the radar hand control, also for radar control panel, on the radar cursor control, there's a couple of track wheels. This is in the back seat. I have my radar hand control bound to an axis, so I do not have to uh, worry about binding anything for the radar cursor control and just use the axes. FFB gain is primarily, is only actually, for those folks that have force feedback like uh, Microsoft Sidewinder or whatever else might be available out of. And the final performance options, uh, CPU lower simulation rate has not been implemented yet. Radar performance mode has not been implemented yet. And the uh, frame rate, again it's an HB issue primarily dealing with those folks that have VR and or uh, multiple screens. All right, let's jump into the cockpit and look at the control bind setups. First item I'd look at is the access commands. Got the normal ones set up. Control stick, rudder, throttles, wheel brakes, and zoom. As well as my antenna hand controls, X and Y axis. All my control binds I've left without any curves. It seems to work fine in this aircraft. The only exception is for the hand control. In order to uh, control a little bit more precisely, I put in a 55 degree curve with a 5% uh, dead zone. It seems to work for me. For our other control binds, 
I'll just start from the top and we'll first off we'll address the ones that I think you have to have. The first item is the air refuel release button or AAR release. You need this because it is involved in using uh, sidewinders in air-to-air -air combat and also in targeting for the Maverick. Next item we'll need that's a have to have is the bomb button. Uh, obvious it's to release air to ground missiles and bombs. Got the cage button bound. Uh, this has to do, allows you to go to the CAA mode if you're in uh, BFM combat. Also, I have the delivery mode bound in the clockwise and counterclockwise direction to compensate for the fact that you may have different weapons with different delivery profiles. Also, we'll need to be able to dispense countermeasures. I have a single button for that. And the F4, if you dispense, it'll release uh, flares and chaff simultaneously. I have the drag parachute deploy for landing. I also have the ability to turn DSCG between radar and TV on. There's a button for this on the control panel, but it's hidden behind the control stick and I find it hard to get at. Flaps are a special thing and you will need to bind those to a, a HOTAS control. Although there's three positions indicated in effect in this module, I'm only going to get two positions, and that is the normal position, which with the flaps in, slats in, and the flaps up, and the out and down positions, which is the normal takeoff and landing configuration. There may be times when you would maybe want the flaps out by themselves if you were, say, engaged in dogfighting. However, manipulating this flap switch does not provide you with this option, either in and up or out and down. So I have elected to basically have two positions for my flaps, out and down and normal. The next uh, mandatory item is the uh, gun pinky switch. I have it bound left and right. It's essential that you have this bound. You'll need it for engaged in air-to-air -air combat to cycle through through various weapons. The next item which I have bound is the Jester UI action switch. Pushing this switch brings up the Jester menu. And as I talked about in special options, you can use your mouse to make inputs or you can make inputs with your head tracker. I find this particularly handy in flight. The gesture context action button allows you to interact directly with Jester and is used for pave spike, dive toss, uh, dogfight, and various uh, BVR modes. I have landing gear bound up or down as a toggle. You will need the nose gear steering auto acquisition button bound. Uh, nose gear steering only functions when you have the button held. Auto acquisition you'll need for air-to-air uh, -air combat. I've also bound the controls for DSCG screen brightness and contrast. That's because I find it difficult to use the mouse to adjust these while I'm trying to uh, clean up the display, which you find you need to do depending on sun position, pitch attitude of the aircraft, and so on. Speed brake, you'll have bound to your HOTUS. I have two positions in, which will automatically track the speed brake all the way in and out hold which will extend the speed brake as long as I'm holding the button down. It only takes a few seconds to go to the full out position. You'll have the trigger bound because you'll need that to uh, fire the uh, gun. Uh, also the trim, pretty standard for any aircraft. You also have the ability to control some of the uh, switch positions in the back cockpit from the front cockpit. I've elected to have the uh, antenna control trigger action 
the antenna control challenge button, which uh, has to do with IFF other aircraft and the antenna control trigger full action, which has to do with the uh, air to ground employment for various weapons. Nice to have items which I find myself using frequently. Top three items have to do with the autopilot functions. Uh, master arm, although it is relatively easy to access on the panel. Tanker pre-contact, which will help keep your attention focused while you're refueling. And the weapon station selector, uh, primarily because I find the left outboard button hard to reach. I have a few buttons available to me and I've elected to put these convenient items on those buttons. The generator switches help with the uh, engine start procedure as well as the uh, engine master. I have put the aircraft manual on a HOTUS button so I can access it a little bit easier in flight as well as the master caution reset which I find hard to get at the on the panel so I have a button for that. And the last of the convenience items is a release the drag chute, although not critical. For the most part, I've gotten my bindings from the heat blur F4E module. You look under the DCS section and controls, you'll find that they're pretty well delineated for setting up the aircraft. There's over 1,200 binds and axes that you can access it is pretty straightforward. There's a few minor exceptions, which I hope I pointed out. And I hope this helps and that you have a good day. Push out.